sorry, it's really cool. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Um, in today's video, we are going to be making a two button strings. Two Victorian button strings, which um, there's always sort of been a notion of what to do with our buttons, and this is this is what we've decided to do. But I think we've had some comments in the past of people oh, telling someone us. Someone said once, yeah, why didn't we make a button, button string? Because obviously we have our bead string, and button strings are actually there's quite a lot of history around button strings yeah so we're going to go into a bit of that today and some of our other buttons we also have another idea for a future video of what to do with lots of button ideas lots of button ideas <laughs> <laughs> the button strings were traditionally made with a large button tied to one end of the piece of string which then sort of anchored the rest of them the buttons were usually glass and metal face buttons with shanks these types of small metal shank buttons were commonly used for closing bodices from the 1860s to the 1890s, which coincided with the same period button strings were popular. Some of our buttons that we've found, we don't find many shank buttons. No. So, but lots of the ones we do have are broken. So we've decided to just glue some jump rings from our jewelry making to make them into shank buttons again. Yeah, because they were shank buttons, but the yeah. shanks usually, ro you know, rust away. Yeah. Button strings were popular pastimes made by girls in the late 19th century. They were also sometimes known as charm strings or memory strings. Young women of the 1860s and to 1900s would have parties in which they would exchange buttons and stories associated with them. Rules dictated that buttons couldn't be purchased for the collection and had to be gifts from other collectors, suitors, friends or family. The gift of a button was considered lucky and the stringing of the buttons on a string enhanced good luck. Which will probably come in handy for mudlarking. Yes. <laughs> we've, um, we've not obviously bought any of these buttons, we've found them all. So they're sort of yeah, like no, gifts. Yeah. So yeah, hopefully they'll give us good button luck in the future. <laughs> um, the strings were often left in view of visitors in order to encourage donations as well as conversation starter by serving as a memento and reminder of past events. The string became a physical reminder of the button owner and times associated with that person. Why are cuts as much the same thing? <laughs> I got here. <laughs> That's not the right bit. I just cut a tiny piece <laughs> off of the big piece. <laughs> I'll put that in the. Don't want to waste it. No, that will come handy at some point. Right, is that the okay. end? There is a romantic folklore associated with button strings and how unmarried girls would collect 999 buttons, no two alike only accepting buttons as gifts from family or exchanges from friends. There is no period reference for the meaning of 999 buttons, but some have speculated that there was actually two ideas. Some stories claim that um, a young lady would meet her true love after adding the 1000th button, whilst other stories claim that the addition of the 1000th would doom the girl to eternal spinsterhood. It, it should be said that it's actually very rare to find a 1000 button string from that period. Most were significantly smaller. That's a lot of buttons. That's a lot of buttons. <laughs> There was a song in the 1870s entitled Give My Button String to Sister. A maudlin ballad about a dying young girl and her wishes for her button string to be given to her baby sister upon her death. Give my button string to sister, I'll not want it any more. Ere the morrow's sun is shining, I'll be on the golden shore. Tell my sister when she's older, when she first begins to sing, that her angel sister left her all her pretty button string. Again, it's like a sad, it's a sad poem slash song associated with what we're making today. The Victorians loved things like that. They though. did, it was all very macabre. Mm. 
There is a collection of 90,000 buttons that came from button strings in the Museum of Connecticut History at Hartford. The collection came from John Ting and has an interesting provenance. Ting was showing his prize Angora goats at the Connecticut State Fair in 1883 where he saw the display of a button string consisting of 1,432 buttons. Intrigued by the collection, Ting offered a surprise $50 to young ladies under 20 years of age who could produce a string of at least 2,700 buttons within 30 days. Ting was inundated with button strings but honoured his commitment and paid out the prize money to all the entries. He probably didn't consider that several young ladies might combine their button strings and share the prize money. In 1884, the collection was presented to the Connecticut State Agricultural Society and placed in the state capital until it was transferred to the State Library in 1943 and later the State Museum. One of the latest dated button strings is from a museum collection with a note dating it to around 1899. The pastime probably died out about this time, just as metal shank buttons were being displaced by hidden closures or the popular decorative use of shell buttons with two or four sewing holes on the face. Look at this beautiful one, look at that. Stunning. <laughs> Is the needle too big? Yeah. Okay. like a caterpillar. It feels like a caterpillar. <laughs> I understand why they used to make toys out of them. Like in the little house on the prairie. Yeah. There's mention of both um, bead strings and button strings in Little House on the Prairie. When Laura and Mary found pretty beads from the Native American camp in Little House on the Prairie, they strung them onto a string to make a bead string for Carrie. And in On the Banks of Plum Creek, Laura and Mary did a similar one with buttons for from Ma's button jar to give to Carrie for Christmas. That afternoon, when Carrie was asleep, Ma beckoned Mary and Laura. Her face was shining with a secret. They put their heads close to hers and she told them they could make a button string for Carrie's Christmas. Ma had saved buttons since she was smaller than Laura and she had buttons her mother had saved from when her mother was a little girl. Mary had one end of the string and Laura had the other. They picked out the buttons they wanted and strung them on the string. 
They held the string out and looked at it, and took off some buttons and put on others. One day, Ma told them that this was the day before Christmas. They must finish the button string that day. Then, quickly, quickly, Laura and Mary finished the button string. Ma tied the ends together for them. It was a beautiful button string. Carrie's eyes and her mouth were perfectly round when she saw it. Then she squealed and grabbed at it and squealed again. She sat on Pa's knee, looking at her candy and her button string, and wriggling and laughing with joy. Is that the last one? Mm-hmm. Well, for now. <laughs> nice. Let me touch it. That's so cool. Yeah, you can see why the children would have liked it. Mm. So these are our button strings. Obviously they're both quite short at the moment. There's 33 on that one. There's 33 on this one. I didn't count how many are on this one. But hopefully they will grow like our bead strings. And every time we find a shank button or a white button that's not mother of pearl, we'll put them on our strings. So we hope you enjoyed learning about button strings. We have a couple of thank yous to give. So first of all we have to thank um, Crafty Caravanners for their lovely card and their wonderful sticker which we shall be adding to our mudlarking wall. Um, if you don't know, Crafty Caravanners are some fellow crafting mudlarking YouTubers so we'll leave a link in, our, in the description to their channel. You should definitely check them out. Not check them check out. That. <laughs> you, should definitely, you should definitely check them out. And if you can't guess from their name, <laughs> you can guess how they do their mud larking. And yeah, they do. They make some very nice videos. So thank you, Crafty Caravanners. It will go pride of place on our board. We also have to thank Nick and Jane for this lovely picture that um, Nick drew. Nick Crocker drew of us for our crafting station. This comic, and it says, "No more bottles, Kate. Help me find my glasses and Oscar." And mum's glasses are on our head and I have arms full of bottles <laughs> and Oscar is up a tree and it's wonderful and it's hanging up above our crafting station and yeah it really makes us chuckle when we see it. <laughs> mum's wellies yeah you can tell that they've they've watched our films the level of detail is amazing <laughs> so yeah thank you very much we absolutely love it <laughs> it's brilliant it's absolutely brilliant. So we're just gonna leave you with a video looking through our buttons that we already owned. Bye! Bye! Um, a long time ago I collected buttons and these are some of them. These are the loose buttons. Um, I thought we'd look through some of them. I'm picking out your favourites. I'm picking out all of these ones. But there's some like beautiful like Enamelled ones, I um, mean this is a modern one, a baker light one, celluloid. Oh, they're so beautiful. Lots of glass ones. Ones like this. Tiny oh. star. Where's the horse? Mark set. Here's the horse. There's a horse. <laughs> I'm picking out all of... Oh look, we found lots of ones like this. Look at this one. Oh, is it gloves? Is it a pair yeah, of gloves? A pair of gloves. Oh. This is one of my favourites. A little glass um, glove button, maybe? It's like a humbug. Boot button, maybe. They're all made of glass. Oh, look at that one. The dice. This is the excellent thing about um, being at home all the time. You get to look for, I know a lot of other mudlarks, particularly. This one has a little cardinal, maybe? Um, Mudlucks particularly are looking back through things, finds from. This is the, yeah, this is. I didn't find this though. You <laughs> found I, them in charity, charity shops. shops. Most of them were from and charity shops, yeah. But you don't find them these days. Mm. I want to show these ones. Though. Oh, look at that one! 
That one looks like a raspberry print. <laughs> Where's our raspberry print? So Sue, a viewer, kindly sent us this could be Tudor raspberry print that they used to put on glasses to to grip them. And this is a not his glass. So this is a, a button that looks just like a raspberry print. <laughs> How cool is that? <gasps> Wow, and thank you very much for this Sue. I'm not sure it's on our bucket list to find, but it goes in our lovely special things thing. But it's weird the things you find because um, there's a few cabochons in there as well and they look like the Niger brothers, but they're not, I don't think. Yeah, Scarab, Scarab Beetles. Beetles. No, because the Niger brothers, you know it's a Niger brother one if it's double, double-sided, whereas these ones are flat backed, but they're probably 1920s from the well, Egyptomania. Egyptian, yeah. Oh, some of them are beautiful. I want Look to... at this brother of pearl one. It's stunning. Wow. We need to find some like this. Yeah, in a dump though, that one would probably perish. Fall apart, perish. Are they grapes? Oh no, it's just some like iridescent flowers. But look, this is a... Um, <gasps> A shell one, like that's on ours. We have one got just one like here. that that we found on our button string. But this is obviously one we had in the house before. See how cool is that? These are my favourites. Mum tells me they're glove buttons. But look at them. This one is amazing. Imagine finding that. You'd be so chuffed. Well, it is a bit like the one that you sewed on them. Um... Oh, Baby. it is like the one I sewed on Dump Baby. So there's the one I sewed on Dump Baby with some enamel. So yeah, maybe it would have it would have looked like that. Looked a bit like that. <sighs> These two are my absolute favourites. No, probably because they're tiny. <laughs> that one's a very old one. This mother of pearl one. I have got lots of pictorial ones as well, but I don't know where they are at the moment. <laughs> you sewed them onto a little velvet frame. And now, and now I don't know what that is. <laughs> but hey, lockdown is a time to find things. 